Joining us now from Tel Aviv is New York Times columnist Roger Cohen. Roger, thank you very much for joining us again tonight. Uh, you joined us uh, last week uh, when we were uh, just less than a week into this. Uh, at the time, your uh, column in, in your column in the New York Times, you said, a page has been turned, whatever the outcome of the war that has just begun. It seems like a page is being turned every day now. Uh, thank you, Lawrence. Yes, it does. Um, a tense and difficult situation just became even more tense and difficult as President Biden is about to arrive in Israel with the explosion at the Al-Ali Hospital in Gaza and the loss of hundreds of lives and the Palestinians blaming Israel for it and Israel retorting that this is, in fact, the work of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, an organization designated as a terrorist group by both the United States and the European Union, saying a malfunctioning rocket uh, caused this. So the president is stepping into as fraught an environment as it's possible to imagine in an Israel still filled with grief and shock at the Hamas attack that killed 1,400 um, Israelis, and there are 200 who are held hostage in Gaza. Is, uh, with the passage of time uh, from October 7th to now, and with what's happened uh, in Gaza today at that hospital, will it make uh, the Israeli government and war cabinet more open to the Biden concerns about uh, risks to civilians in Gaza? That's hard to say, Lawrence. I think there is certainly awareness that for a democracy like Israel, the rules and laws of war matter. They matter, and everything possible should be done to avoid civilian deaths in Gaza, the deaths of Palestinian civilians who must be distinguished from Hamas. That, however, has proved extremely difficult up to now. The area is being bombarded. There are already uh, thousands of Palestinians dead, according to the Palestinian health authorities. So there will certainly be pressure from, I think, President Biden uh, urging Israel to be as prudent and careful as possible, while recognizing that Israel cannot live alongside a terrorist organization whose charter calls for the end of the state of Israel and the slaughter of Jews and has just shown that it is very serious about that. I, I want to listen to something that uh, a senior Hamas official said on October 11th. Uh, let, let's listen to this. Israeli معروف عنه أنه بحب الحياة. إحنا منطحي. نعتبر إنه قتلنا شهداء. فأمنا يعني أهم أمني عند أي واحد فلسطيني إنه يستشهد في سبيل الله عن أرضه. Roger, if you don't have the on-screen translation there, what he said is the Israelis are known to love life. We, on the other hand, sacrifice ourselves. We consider our dead to be martyrs. The thing any Palestinian desires the most is to be martyred for the sake of Allah defending his land. And so that is a senior Hamas official, and that is his attitude uh, toward both uh, Israeli life and Palestinian life. Well, personally, Lawrence, I think all life is sacred and that we must value human life. Um, uh, that is uh, a core belief of mine, and I I believe there are millions of Palestinians who also value life, as certainly uh, Israelis do. I think one of the tragedies of this situation over the past decades is that the option of victimhood uh, has been chosen uh, in many instances, I think. There have been opportunities uh, for the Palestinian people and for Israel to reach a two-state outcome allowing both peoples to live in dignity, in peace, uh, beside each other, and in security. Those opportunities have been missed. And victimhood leads nowhere. It leads nowhere in the end. 
There is nothing. The past is past. The question is, do you want to put food on the table of your children? Do you want to move forward? And after the terrible things that have happened uh, over the last 10 days, I think both Israel uh, and Palestinians must ask themselves at some point, isn't it time to bring this terrible conflict to an end and to move forward in dignity as human beings, all of the people of the Holy Land?